Okay, so I did a little off-camera work, and after I was done cutting this out on the bandsaw, I actually sat down on the shaving horse and I shaped the handle, kind of getting it closer to a finished product. But obviously you can tell I'm nowhere near done. I stop at this point, and the reason being is I stop here and I focus entirely on just uh, fitting the axe head onto the handle. And the reason why I do that is I'm, I want to make sure that that axe head is going to wind up on here perfectly, that the bit alignment is going to be good, and everything is going to look good about that actually being hafted on here in the end before I commit to working on the rest of this handle. Early on, when I was doing this type of work, I would spend a whole bunch of time working on the handle itself and getting that really nice, and then I would half the axe head, and every now and then, something would just go wrong with the axe head where something would be out of alignment or something that would make me regret having spent so much time working on the handle itself. So I typically advise anybody, whether you're really, really good at this and have done this a lot, or if you're just starting out, uh, at, at this point, get to this rough point in the handle and then stop and then actually focus entirely on hafting that head onto this handle. And then once that is looking good, you pop this handle right off again. Don't worry about the head until later and shape down the rest of the handle. So at this point, let's uh, start working on hafting the head. So one of the things that I did off camera is I actually chamfered the top and the back and the front of this handle. You can see that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that I do before I get to this point. Okay, so let me show you some of the things that I did before we got to this point so that way you kind of can follow along. I made sure to measure the lower portion of the X eye at the longest spot from front to back. And that is what I base that drawing off of, right? So I know that that actually fits and that everything is it's gonna fit. And it's gonna start to get tight around here, which is exactly what we're looking for, right? So that's one of the first things that I did. Now, the second thing that I do here is I chamfer uh, the back of this handle and the front of this handle. And the reason for that is it helps, it helps scribing on this next part. So what we do now is on the lower side of the eye, we check the width, right, at the widest section. So there we are, I'm locking that in. It's not something you need to write down, you're just gonna scribe it onto the handle. So we're gonna make our little measurements here. I'm gonna find kind of something close to the center. I'll write that on there. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find out where that gets tight again, which is right about there. Lock that in, lock that in. And I'm going to kind of scribe to that spot. No, I'm actually going to opt to not do that at this point because it's just not, it's not going on as straight as I'd like. So I'm just going to use my pencil to draw that. But typically, I would scribe that with this caliper. Okay. And then with a little bit of just artistic finesse, I'm just gonna draw that on and draw something hopefully symmetrical on this other side. That looks good to me. Flip this bad boy, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Lower section of the eye, the widest section down there. Now this will probably scribe on pretty good actually, so I'm going to touch the back shoulder and from about the back shoulder I'm going to start scribing on. Gotta love ash, it just like it's so soft to the hard edge of that caliper, it just goes on so easily. And now what we have is we have the sections that we can cut down to. Now we're already pretty co pretty close, which is great, um, but sometimes you're not, and that is a very helpful thing to do to get yourself in the ballpark. So 
So I'm going to start on the back end, cutting down to that line. And then I'm going to do the same on the front. I'm kind of going to pick a spot that I'm not going to pass. I'm going to mark that spot with this. So I'm not going to go forward to that line, just for now, while I'm doing bulk removal. So now I'm going to join these two lines. So I've got a line drawn on here and a line drawn on here, and I'm going to cut till it's flat. Which isn't too far. Because remember, I made this billet for this accent, so I've already kind of done those measurements. Same on the other side. And what that does is it gives you a point of reference for the widest section in your handle. Now, you know on the inside of the eye, the widest section is like wherever it is on your particular axe head. It's about here on this axe head, which means that we're not really gonna touch this section here. Uh, that line should basically stay unless the actual job of framing tells us otherwise. And now, from here, I'm actually going to shape down the top of this axe head. The top of this handle, rather. Because we know what axe heads look like. We know what the inner eye looks like. Okay, now that you have the general shape down, what you're gonna do next is you're actually, so you notice how tall this thing is, right? The reason why I cut my billet so that they're this tall is twofold. One, if any checking happens, it stops before it gets actually into the ax handle. And the second and more important reason is it allows me a lot of wiggle room up here to make this section too thin, like undersized, so that way the axe head can slide on and off a lot easier. That makes checking the fit a lot easier. 
So I'm actually gonna really shape this upper section down. I'm gonna undersize it up here so that way it fits on easily. So let's do that. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chamfer the entire upper portion of this ax head. And the reason being is when I hit it with a mallet, I don't want this hard edge to have anything cleave off or break off. So if you chamfer it, it's less likely to happen. Front and back as well. Test the fit, it's probably not gonna actually fit, but this will give me an opportunity to see where it's too tight. Oh, that's even better, that's great. It's coming along perfectly. So, you will notice we've got this big gap in the front and we have some spots that are touching. And in order to make this gap close, we need this ax head to go back on the ax handle. And in order to make that happen, we need to relieve the tension from the widest spot forward, so that way the ax can actually go backward, right? So I'm gonna mark on here the spots that are touching, and I'm gonna primarily focus on those, anything that's in front of that line. Okay. So you gotta pay attention to that there. Everything else is looking okay. It's not quite deep enough yet that we can actually sight the bit alignment because right now it's so loose and so far back that that won't tell you anything. All right, working the handle down more. Find where you made your mark and start working there. Test fit. You do a lot of testing. All right, it's closing up a little bit. We still have some tension. It's starting to get to that spot where we can probably start wrapping on the bottom of this ax handle. But I'm still just gonna continue using my eyes real quick. So from here forward to there. We are touching a little right here, which that's probably our problem right now for that gap. This whole side's okay, except for right there. Notice how I'm not cutting anything off the back end. Even if it's touching, I'm not cutting anything off the back end because I want this ax head to move back on the handle. So you're not gonna need to remove anything that's touching because it's not gonna touch in a second. I'm also looking for wear marks. See that? That's kind of probably stopping it from moving back a little bit. Got a wear mark there and a wear mark here. Get rid of those. Be a little cautious about things before everything's filled out. 
right there where that was a real bad spot. So we know we're gonna wanna get rid of that. Right here's the other spot. And I'll probably wrap on the bottom at this point. So we really closed that gap. It's getting pretty close to done. And you can see this gap back here. That gap's going to be filled out by the fact that it flares. And let's wrap on the bottom of this and check bit alignment. portion of the video. So you can't really tell anything that's going on. It's a very sharp axe. So. Ooh, that bit alignment is amazing. So as well as checking the bit alignment, you need to also consider, you know, how close or far away it is from the actual walls of the inner eye. Because if it's really close, if it's if the bit alignment's perfect, but one side's really close and the other side's really far, once you drive a wedge in, it's actually going to pull the axe head out of alignment. So that's one of the things you have to consider. Right now we are a little closer to this wall, but we are just a little bit that actually works in our favor in this instance. It's pretty perfect, but once we drive the wedge in, that should pull just enough to make it dead, dead perfect at this point. Now, this is not where it's going to be hafted. So we need to travel all of the cutting that we did all the way down this axe handle at this point. So let's see where we're touching. Looking great up front now. Got a little bit of the contact right here on the side. And let's see on this side, right here. This whole thing's got great contact. So that's a good side. And this is where that chamfer comes into play. So now I can wrap on this without worry of busting the handle. And you're gonna really see me go to town here. I'm gonna transfer this really far down. So let's see. Why not do it up here? So. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at how deep down uh, this would have to go in order to be on the same plane as the spot that's actually getting contact. And I'm just gonna continue that and make it flat from there to there. Now you see me cutting down here. This is getting into what it's gonna look like on the final product. Uh, this is just like a thing that I do. You don't have to do this at this point. I'm going to leave this hard edge. We're going to see if we bite there. Probably will. But you'd rather have contact than no contact.
Okay. Now let's see what that looks like. Put a little tension on it. Wrap on the bottom. Sorry that you can't see that part. I'm sure I'll have videos where I'm doing it at some point and you can just refer to that. So now we're coming off a little bit this way. So I want to pull the lower portion of the bit itself down this way. In order to do that, I need to remove material on this side down here. And I need to remove material on this side up here. You can't add any more material, right? So the opposite of those points, you don't do anything. So typically what I do is I put an N for no, like don't remove too much material over here, and a Y for yes, as in yes, remove material up here. Do the opposite on that end, and that should bring us into alignment there. Now sometimes the, the bit alignment is off this way or this way, and at that point you focus on these two points. Like if it needs to come around this way, you move material over here, but you don't remove anything over here. So that's kind of the lay of the land as far as those markings go. Once again, check where you're getting contact because you're not always going to get wear marks that indicate contact. So I like to kind of cite them, mark them because if they're there, that's great. If they're not, then you won't need them. Okay, we still got a little bit of a gap on the front, so we need to. Work more on the front than the back. So another good point here is even though we have an N here for no, we do need to bring things back. So I am going to work down on this side and you should always get rid of any ridges that occur. Even if you have an N for no on one side and a Y for yes on the other, you should get rid of those high spots that are like gonna bite into the actual underside of the X head. So, moving more in the front, like we discussed, because we want it to go back a little bit more. I got a little tension mark up here, and this is the yes side, and it's on the front, so I really want to get rid of that. So once we drive the wedge, and that might not even touch there at that point, but it's just something we're going to keep continuing down as we go down the axiom. Like, I almost guarantee you, we're not going to touch up here, but you just stay consistent as you work your way down. Notice I'm like... Just barely gonna take that down. That's our no side, right? And plus we still want it to go back, so we don't really want to take off too much there. Right. Y for yes, and you can see that real hard tension mark there, so that's definitely a yes. And it's the front, so we want it to move back. So we have to get rid of this stuff in the front. And I just how deep I'm digging on, on the side. That's to correct the bit alignment. All right. I like kind of I like thinking about how the finished product's gonna look at a certain point. Got a tension mark here, it's not too bad. Tension mark here, that's great actually, that helps us. Tension mark here, but we got this N for no. Um, so we're just gonna leave that. Even though it's on the front, I think at the, I think next half we're gonna be beyond that. So let's take a look. Starting to look really good here. Get contact here, 
contact here. And now that we're getting so low, you really want to start committing to working this wood down slowly. You don't want to wind up shooting yourself in the foot this far along. So bit alignment looks perfect. So we're just going to continue what we're working on. The distance on each side of the axe head itself is perfect. It's the same. So our bit alignment is showing true at this point. We're probably about an inch. Yeah, probably about an inch away to a final position here. So at this point, you're going to notice me. I'm going to start really actually shaping this handle at this point. And at that point, once we're done with that, we'll just commit this thing and start working on the rest of the handle. The eye on that thing is so big that that's why this is like taking a while. It's a very specific scenario that we find ourselves in here. So, this is going to be rounded off and that's going to be rounded off at some point. So we need to kind of consider how that's going to affect the overall shape. Do a lot of thinking at this point. Like I said, go slow. Like I was saying before though too, this is just to make sure the bit alignment looks good. You're not actually going to drive a wedge in yet. So once you're done with the handle, you can kind of tweak it a little bit this way or that way with the sander once you get to that point. Okay, we're going to test that out and probably stop at this point.
we probably have like another, you know, probably about at this point, three quarters of an inch before we're in the final position, which is perfect. The rest of that will be done with the sander. Bit alignment is looking beautiful. Looking great coverage front to back. And everything looks good. So like I was talking about at the beginning of this part, um, this now with everything going right on over here means that you can work on the rest of your ax handle. Shape it down because you know that this is going to wind up being perfect. So let's knock this thing off and start working on the rest of this.